theorems are usually derived from axioms, explicitly or implicitly. However, before there was such a thing as reverse math, we already knew of odd things like the axiom of choice, which has about 20 natural equivalent formulations as axioms or theorems. And the emphasis on the equivalent, like, as I say, theorems are derived from axioms, but, well, the axiom of choice doesn't care. It's powerful enough. Of course, these equivalences are over ZF. ZF can prove a lot, almost everything. Maybe not choice, but well. So, well, it's not such, nothing to do with actual mathematics, almost. The constructivists constructed their Brauerian counterexamples to reject a theorem they didn't like. They proved that the theorem implied the law of excluded middle, which, I mean, which is the thing they hate all, the most in this world, presumably. So these are two examples where we don't have theorems derived from axioms, but the other way around. Now, the constructivists were too blinded by their constructive agenda, probably, to do something with this. And while the axiom of choice is a nice motivating example, but it's, oh, it's too strong. Ah, yes, and this was also rather informal. Then came reverse math, and all was well. So the aim of reverse math, as Harvey set it up, was to find the minimal axioms A needed to prove a theorem T. And T should be a theorem of ordinary mathematics. No talk about the axiom of choice or whatever. We want to be talking about countable or separable things, which is, well, essentially non-set theoretic mathematics. And this, well, we, we're looking for axioms to prove a theorem. We always assume a kind of uh, base theory, RC0, which is very weak, actually. It's just, it essentially states that there's a Turing machine, an idealized computer without uh, resource constraints. So the main theme, or the aim of reverse math is to find the minimal axioms A such that in RC0, we can derive T from A. Now, surprisingly, once we've found the minimal axioms, we, well, they're equivalent. We can prove that the axioms are equivalent to the theorem. And that's where the name comes from, reverse math. We also can derive the axioms from the theorem. Also, which also is surprising, the, the same five systems always return. This is sort of computable math, uh, WKL0, AC0, ATR0, and pi 11 ca 0 There's are five logical systems, and they occur a lot. Then, the main theme of reverse math is what Steve Simpson called that most theorems of ordinary math are either provable in RCA0 or equivalent to one of the big five. Like, so we have this equivalence in RCA0. Now, emphasis on most. Because, well, what's most? There's at least a lot of them that fall in these five categories. So as an example, we'll take a look at uh, Wie Koenig's lemma. The, as this WKL here, Wie Koenig's lemma. Which sounds rather trivial, like an infinite binary tree has an infinite path. It's not, I mean, even for a computable infinite binary tree, this path need not be computable. So it's not part of computer. You cannot implement this on a computer in a precise technical sense. Yeah. Yeah. For uh, it has to be decidable. Uh, well, there's there's a, there's a subtle distinction between a binary tree and a tree with at most two successors at every node. Because with at most two, you may not be able to decide how many, whereas a binary or a 0, 1, 3, as Harvey said, means that you can always, you always exactly know the successors. So for the analyst in the room, or analysts in the room, 
The Heine Borel lemma that accountable covering of the unit interval has a finite subcovering is equivalent to this well, logical thing, to why we Koenig lemma. And there's actually a, a bunch of equivalences from analysis. Continuous function is uniformly continuous, Riemann integrable, or uh, attains its maximum, or that this differential equation with some technical remarks has uh, a solution. It's all equivalent to this logical statement, WKL. Then, for example, logic, Gödel's completeness or Gödel's compactness theorem is equivalent, stuff from algebra, and even higher analysis, like the, the han banach theorem for separable Banach spaces. That's all equivalent to WKL, which is pretty neat because you wouldn't expect that, I mean, you wouldn't expect equivalences between algebra and analysis. All this can be found in Steve Simpson's excellent book, Subsystems of Second Order Arithmetic, the Bible of Reverse Math, say. I just let me do some advertising. Carl Mummert and Demir Tsafarov are re writing a successor book to this one. Another way of... Uh, how am I doing on time, by the way, Andreas? Three minutes. Three minutes. So another way of... Uh, the way I like to present reverse math to philosophers is with pictures. So the, there's this notion of logical strength, first order strength, and RCA0 is rather weak. WKL is essentially uh, is a little bit stronger, and so the, so the big five are stronger and stronger. The visually surprising aspect is that mathematical theorems fall in these red areas, and are sparse everywhere else, as it were. Like the, we can take any sort of logical statement and cram it in between. For example, between WKL0 and ACA0, we have the consistency of I sigma 17. However, mathematical theorems somehow avoid the consistency of I sigma 17. They tend to go to those red ones. And then I show the philosophers all the examples from Simpson's book. And they are impressed. And again, of course, this is not absolute. There are some exceptions, like RT22, like Ramsey's theorem for pairs, although I don't think that's a really good exception. And something better by my colleague uh, Keta Yokoyama, the Dirac Delta theorem. That sort of falls in between here, in the cracks. And you know what they say about the fringe? They, nowadays, they even verify reverse math in this proof assistant cock, and it's a interaction between Korea and France, which is pretty neat. And yeah, well, the, well, two things. Uh, first of all, verifying the. Um, reverse math results in the behemoth that is cock. Plus, they would like to have um, trimmed down versions of cock, so to say, which are at these levels, like somehow breaking down the entire calculus of constructions down to, say, the level of ACA0 or weaker. That, that's two aspects. So verify the correctness of the equivalences, first of all. Secondly, yeah, bring cog down to reverse math level. I mean, the base, the calculus of constructions prune it a little bit. Now, to top things off, each of these five systems can be given a corresponding computational class in the sense of Turing computability. And there's a foundational program going back hundreds of years, which is also neat. And so I'm just going to stop there. So I do some stuff in non-standard analysis and reverse math, but you can ask me about that afterwards. Yeah, thank you very much. Right, so, uh, one more thing, thanks to the John Templeton Foundation for picking up the tab. They may be listening. <laughs>